CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. For thousands of years, man has looked upward towards the night sky and dreamed. Pleasure barges rode down canals on the planet Mars. Life prospered in the lush jungles of Venus. And the moon was a supercosmic chunk of green cheese. In less than a decade, however, the Martian canals have become mere illusion. There can be no tropical paradise in the deadly atmosphere of Venus. And as far as our nearest celestial neighbor consisting of green cheese is concerned, well, but to those of you who are dreamers, do not despair too soon. The universe is infinite, and for every question to which an answer is found, there are a thousand mysteries yet to be solved. Margot, you don't know what you're doing. I have to get rid of you before it's too late. Before you take over my body. You can't fight me. I have to. I have to kill you. You can't let me die. I won't let you have my body. Don't let me die. You must. Margo, if I die, we both die. Our mystery drama, The First Woman in Space, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Victoria Dan and stars Phyllis Newman. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There have been men in space, and one day there will be women. To those cynics, who would deny that this is indeed the natural progression of things, may we remind you that there was a time when women were barred from the unladylike profession of ballet dancing. And hard as it is to believe, also a time when only men were considered efficient secretaries. Ah, but this is the 20th century, a more enlightened age. Of course, a woman can do anything a man can do. If only they'd let her... Waiter, uh, can we have the check? I, I could really go for a nice tall glass of iced tea. Marco, we don't have time. A waiter, a glass of iced tea, please. That's out of season. It'll take twice as long. Harry, you rushed me through the soup. You hurled me past the salad. And as far as the entree is concerned, it was a minute steak in every sense of the word. Now, can't we just relax well, and the enjoy... the starts in 15 minutes. So we'll be a little late. But it's in your honor. And practically the entire staff of the university will be there waiting. Not to mention the board of trustees. Until you came by the apartment to pick me up for dinner, I knew nothing about any so-called reception. Uh, well, I wanted to surprise you. <laughs> Some surprise. Our first real date in six months. And you've transformed it into some big publicity play for the university. Your university. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't tell you before. But you must know I have had it up to here with receptions, interviews, the publicity routine. Two months in orbit, all those weeks in isolation. I just wanted a simple, pleasant evening alone with my fiancé. I miss you, Harry. I I thought you would miss me. Margot. Hey, I missed you. That's why I began spending more time in the lab, and as a result... I may have made a major breakthrough in the conversion formula, but, you, you see, I, I need more funds. I, uh, I see. Yeah, look, if we play it right with the trustees tonight, I can get that grant. That's why we've got to get going. Oh, here's my iced tea. Thank you. You know what that crosstown traffic can be. Oh, it's so hot in here. Oh, can't tell you how refreshing this tastes. Margot, we've got to leave. When I'm finished... How can you be so inconsiderate? That does it. You can go by yourself. Oh, but you have to come. They're expecting you. You're a celebrity. That's what those people understand. Respect. I don't want to argue. Oh, it's hot in here. Margot, where are you going? Home. Good night, Harry. Margot, this is the last time. I, I promise. D- don't worry about me. 
I, I, I can take a cab. Margo, wait. Driver? Like I say, you're lucky I happen to be driving by. One a night, they have to wait outside for a taxi. Do you have the heat on? Yeah, you want me to turn it up a little? No, 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 turn it off. I feel warm. Warm? In this frost? What are you rolling the window down for? It's hot in here. It's 20 degrees out there. Is your radio on? No, it busted. You don't hear it? Hear what? That, that music. Strange music. You know, I can't place it, but you look familiar. I've seen your picture someplace, like the newspaper, the TV. Can't, can't you hear it? Yeah, yeah, the TV. But you ain't an actress. It's hot. So hot. What did you just say? I was saying you're famous, but you ain't an actress, right? No. You are an actress. No, you, 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 you just agreed with me. You just said it was hot. Lady, I... Really, I just heard you. So hot, Margo. How do you know my name is Margo? I don't know your name is Margo. I heard you. You just called me Margo. Lady, honest, I didn't call you. Hey, wait a second. Margo Gordon, that's so You're Margo Gordon, the astronaut in my cab. I, I could have sworn I heard someone say my name. Well, here we are, Miss Gordon. I mean, Dr. Gordon. Here it is. 2930 Newark Street. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, uh, keep the change. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Good night. Good night. It really can't be 20 degrees out here. It's too hot. Much too hot. But why me, Margot? You ought to be seeing one of the program doctors. I trust you, Owen. Trust me? I can't let anything jeopardize my chances to be on that crew. What crew? The Senate is about to pass the appropriation bill for a second Athena probe. You mean you're going up there again? Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Athena 1 was just a rehearsal, but Athena 2 is it. I've never wanted anything so badly. That's why I can't go to the mission staff and tell them what I've just told you. So you hear voice. I hear one voice. A very clear voice. Margo, sometime or another, a lot of us hear voices. I, I kept thinking maybe, maybe it's an after effect of all those weeks in zero gravity. Well, I don't find a thing wrong with you, physically. So? So, there are three possibilities. Yes. First, maybe the excitement of the past few months is getting to you. Second, there may be the pressure to succeed again. And third? Well, you probably say it's none of my business. What is? Harry Freeman. Harry. Do you really want to marry Harry Friedman? Why, of course. Well, there goes that theory. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about marrying Harry. He's a brilliant biochemist. Well, so I hear. Oh, oh, and I I never thought anyone as good-looking as Harry could, well, really be interested in me. You are happy, then? Sure. I mean, well, well recently he has been getting on my nerves. But is any relationship perfect? Well, he's... And, of course, the way he behaved last night didn't help matters at all. Margot. I mean, trying to show me off to his colleagues like I was some kind of curiosity. Margot. Oh, oh, and you really should have been a psychiatrist. I'm just a simple country doctor. And you've made a very simple point. Maybe I'd better not see Harry for a while. Yes, General. Yes, I just heard the news. Of course. I never doubted the bill would go through. Well, I'm delighted, too. Yes. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there Monday morning. Goodbye, General. Uh, uh, just a minute. Harry. I... Oh, can I come in? Well... Oh, please. I have something to tell you. Harry, I thought we agreed... Yeah, to go our separate ways for a while, I know, but... I, I was just on the phone with General Tolliver. Look, I don't care who you were on the phone with. Harry, I've never seen you like this. Look, I did a lot of thinking this past week about us. You did? I thought about what you said. About, well, about my resenting you being such a celebrity. Oh, I didn't say well, you that. You didn't exactly say that, but it's what you felt. Maybe I did resent it a little, and... And maybe it was inevitable that you'd begin to believe I was using it. Oh, Harry. But it's true. That's what it looked like. 
The truth is, I couldn't resist. The board of trustees, the promise of new lab equipment in exchange for an appearance by the country's first woman in space. Uh, all those years of struggling without adequate funding, uh, I guess I forgot... I forgot about your feelings. And I want to apologize. Oh, oh Harry, I'm so glad. I'm not finished. I want to really convince you that I love you. For yourself. And not because you're the famous Dr. Gordon. Look, I want you to quit the space program. What? I want you to quit the space program. You're kidding. Then you'll just be plain old Margot Gordon again, and, and I can have you to myself. What makes you think I even want to be plain old Margot Gordon again? I want you down on Earth, in my house, married to me. Well, we've discussed this before. Well, when are we going to get married? When I'm ready. Well, it's been two years. You know, I'm beginning to doubt that you... You, can... you know, you always manage to turn the tables and come up the good guy. You, you, you've got me all confused, and, and, and there's so much on my mind. Margot. Margot. Oh, no, not again. What are you talking about? Margot, it's so hot. Please, please tell me. Who are you? I'm your fiancé, Margot, in case you forgot. Not you, Harry. What? Margot, send him away. I'm hearing things. Oh, darling, listen to me. Send him away. Harry, I have he a... He is an intruder. Harry, I, I, I have a lot on my mind right now. Please leave me alone. Margot, what's happening to us? Things... Change. He must leave. Uh, people change. Make him leave. I, I don't want to argue. Look, I'm not going anywhere until... Well, until we discuss this like two adults. Of course, him. Get out, Harry. Margo. No, I, I... I don't mean that. Yes, you mean it. I, 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 I didn't really mean what I just said. I think you did, Margo. Oh, Harry, Harry, wait a minute. No, no, this time I'll say goodnight. Harry, I... Oh, what's wrong? What's happening? Margo. No. No, I just... Imagine I hear you. Do not imagine you hear me. I am real. I'm going out of my mind. Alone, all alone in the void, in the cold, the darkness. Then your ship, your space. This can't be. All alone. And now I'm not alone any longer. You found me. You brought me back. Brought you back? Yes. You mean back from space? Back from the Athena One probe? Yes. Oh, what's the matter with me? I'm talking to thin air. No, I am real. I exist. I was all alone in darkness. I saw your ship. I felt the life inside. Life. No more alone. Something in my mind. I'm part of you now, Margo. Part of you. Shut up. We share now. Part of your body, part of your mind. Shut up. You feel my thoughts, hear my thoughts, think my thoughts. Shut up. Why am I sweating like this? It's so hot. So hot, Marco. We are so hot. It's, it's a reaction to all the tensions. That's what it is. Don't fight me. Oh, please. What do you want from me? I want you, Marco. You want me? Yes. But why? Answer me. Why? What are you? Please, what are you? What indeed? The ordinary human being consists of flesh, bones, and a pattern of electrical impulses. And although man has asked the question, what are you, many times in the past, it has usually been in a more philosophical context. But that, of course, is when we are dealing with an ordinary human being, which we obviously are not doing here. And also, when we are in a philosophical mood, which apparently Margot Gordon is not. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. alone in the universe. There really hasn't been much evidence one way or another. And if we do have any neighbors, they certainly have been keeping a rather low profile. In any event, Margot Gordon is a brilliant scientist who seems to be wondering if maybe she hasn't come back alone from a mission in outer space. It's not that she's inhospitable, but 
There are certain kinds of company that a sane, average human being can very well do without. Please, please tell me. Who are you? Who are you? I am the last. The last? The last? I am all that remains, all that survives. Survives? Survives what? Our world destroyed. Our world is dead. Your world? Our planet is gone in the light of a thousand stars. Home is gone in the blaze of a thousand stars. Blaze of a thousand stars? You mean your sun exploded? The heat of a thousand suns. Our planet is no more. I'm all that survives. A traveler with no home to return to. Waiting for a home to return to. A traveler? What did you travel in? Where is your ship? There is no ship. No need for a ship. Why can't I see you if indeed you do exist? I exist. I can't see you. So long ago. So long to search. To wait. <laughs> An eternity of waiting in the darkness and the cold and the emptiness. This is insane. I'm talking to thin air. My mind survives. My mind lives. My thoughts are my eyes. My thoughts are my hands. Why are you doing this to me? My thoughts guided me. They found your ship. They found you. What do you want from me? No more searching. Your hands are my hands. No. Your eyes are my eyes. It's impossible. I live again in the sunlight again. We live. No. We share this body. I survive in this body. No more darkness. No more aloneness. I survive in this body. You can't take over another person's body. We share this body. It's indecent. But this body must adjust, adjust to the heat of this planet. It's too warm. I'm, I'm so hot. We are hot. We must do something about the heat. What's wrong with me? What's happening to me? So hot, hot. No, no. No, no, I don't. I don't hear you. You're not real. Oh, oh. Gotta concentrate. Gotta concentrate on something else. Get away from the heat. Uh, a movie. Um, all right, a movie. You honking at us, lady? How do you expect me to move my car with your truck in the way? It's a public driveway. I can't go around a moving van. There's not enough room. I have to get somewhere. Can't you move this truck of yours out of the way? And and what about all these crates? Lady, we're right in the middle of unloading this junk. It's bad enough we have to work overtime. Hey, hey, would you look out? I right, please, get out of the way. These boxes are heavy. I wouldn't, wouldn't want you to get hurt. This isn't safe. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Now, stand back now. Hey, George, check the coupling, will you? Something sounds a little loose. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. Not you again. There's danger. Hey, George, ease it to the right. Yeah, hey, check that rope before you put it on the ramp. Before, George. There's danger. No. The wooden box inside is heavy equipped. I don't hear you. The rope that pulls it is old, thin. In a moment, it will snap. Okay. Easy, George. In a moment, it will hurtle down and crush the man, crush you. Oh, I don't hear you. You must be ready to save us. You have the strength to save us. Put out your arms. Okay, let it go, George. We have the strength. We have the strength in our arms to stop it, Margo. No, look out. No, Margo, no. Out of the way. Lady, you'll be killed. We are strong. What on earth? No. Release the crate. Gently let it roll to a stop. I, I don't believe what I just saw. Where did I get the strength to do this? If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, well, you just put out your hands and stop that box dead in its tracks. Over 800 pounds. You are real. You do exist. Yeah, how did you do it, lady? I really did bring you back from space. Yes, Margo. An alien creature living inside of my body. 
What am I going to do? Hey, how'd you do it, lady? I mean, you got iron arms or something? I have to get out of here. Hey, wait a second, lady. Wait now. Come back. It's incredible, Margot. Do you believe me now, Owen? I don't know what to believe. Heartbeat, blood pressure, up radically. Body temperature is abnormally low. Either there's something wrong with all my medical instruments or... Is the idea of extraterrestrial life so hard to accept? Well, I've been a physician for 30 years, and I've never seen anything like this before. Why, there are impurities in your blood I, I, I can't even define. Well, doesn't that prove that... All it proves is that your body is undergoing some massive changes. Owen... My body is adjusting to an alien presence. A being that somehow, through a process I can't explain, found me. Attached itself to me out there in space. You're not serious. 800 pounds of machinery hurtling down a loading ramp. I should have been crushed to death. Instead, I caught it as if, as if it were a runaway shopping cart. Almost half a ton. There's not a bruise on my hands. Well, the imagination is a strange thing. Sometimes we think we have... Owen. Owen, at this point, it's not necessary. If you believe me or not, just help me. In two days, I have to undergo a follow-up physical at the base. I'll be going before General Tolliver at the Project Medical Team. Well, they'll find out just what I They have. won't. Because you're going to help me. Well, I don't think you understand, Mom. I'm sure there's something you can give me. I'm not asking you to treat the cause. Just the symptoms. There's nothing I can do. Oh, and there must be shots, pills. Well, it'll take more than that to cover up what's, what's wrong with you. Who said cover up? I want you to get rid of it. You're a doctor. Well, didn't you hear me? I said your entire physiology is altered. Your blood chemistry has changed. So? Anything I could give you. I can't predict how your body would react. If I don't pass that physical, I'll be dropped from the Athena program. Well, you'll have to tell them at the project. They have a right to know. No, I can't. Maybe they can find a way to deal with whatever it is. No. No, you help me, Owen. I'm not qualified to help you, Margot. But I have a friend. A specialist? You could say that. Let me give you his name. I'm, I want you to talk to him. A psychiatrist? Well, maybe he can help you understand. Reality is difficult to face sometimes. People aren't as strong as they think they are. My mind is fine. Margot, you need help. I feel responsible. And so... And so you'll tell them? Well, I can't just stand by and let this happen to you. I won't let you tell them. It'll ruin me. I won't let you tell them. I'll kill you first. Margot. My friend, my doctor, turning against Margo. me. Margot. You, you don't know how much strength I have. I can put these two hands around your neck <laughs> and choke the life out of you. Margot, you, you're choking me. Explain why I am so strong. Explain why you can't push me away. You're bigger than me. Why are you so helpless? Oh, I, I can't breathe. How easily I could kill you. Oh, no. The power of life and death oh, over you. Please. I could kill you. I could... Oh. Oh. Owen. Oh, and Owen, I don't know what came over me. I'm in the name of... Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I wouldn't hurt you for the world, and I almost... What you just did... I'm... I, I was angry. I, I didn't know my own strength. Come on, go. Oh, Owen, please help me. I've got to think. I, I've got to think. You really expect me to believe a story like that, Doctor? How do you think I'd come to you if I didn't have to? Well, I know you don't like me. You can't accept the idea of Margot and me getting married. We're not married. here to discuss my opinions. I asked to meet you here because... Whatever else I think of you, you are a brilliant, innovative scientist. Oh, boy. First you feed me a wild story about creatures from outer space. Then you start praising me. Now, come on, Owen. What do you really want? I only want to help Margot. No, seriously. Tired of playing country, Doctor? Do you want me to get you back into the university? Now, Harry, get this straight. I don't like you. I've never liked you. You may put on a nice enough front where it counts to someone like Margot, but... Well, inside, you're out of touch with people. You, you're not really warm at all. But you're smart. And you've got the equipment. A lab. If anyone can help Margot, you can. Help her? If you really care about her the way you claim to. I do care about her. I happen to love her. Now, we had an agreement. Yeah, but she hasn't been the same. I know. Since she came back from the first Athena probe. You noticed it, too. Well, that's what I've been trying to say to you. It's not mental, Harry. 
It's physical. You actually believe... As a scientist, aren't you at least a a little bit curious? You've written a dozen papers on the possibility of extraterrestrial life, and here's an opportunity presenting itself. You say that there is actual physical evidence. Put a blood sample from her on a slide. Okay. Okay, I'll go along. But look, is she willing to see me? She'll see you. I don't know if I want to do this, Owen. And that's why I'm coming along. Harry knows what he's doing. Now, just relax. General Tolliver called me again today. Oh? They've narrowed the final crew selection down to half a dozen. My chances are even better now. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, if this creature came from another world and was used to a colder environment... Go on. Well, it could explain the radical drop in your body temperature. That's logical, but what are you getting at? Well, I'm no scientist, but I have an idea... Did you just hear something? <clears throat> Nothing. You're, you're jumpy. What I'm thinking... No! I have this strange feeling. <laughs> Something's wrong with the car. We're taking a turn too fast. Hang on. Owen, step on the brake. I, I can't. My, my foot... The gas pedal is stuck. Do something. I can't. Look out. The tree. The sky wheel off <laughs> Be silent and safe, the saying goes. Silence never betrays you. Apparently, the good doctor should have kept his eyes on the road and his thoughts to himself. There are strange powers at work here. Obviously, our alien is quite capable of looking out for itself and feels that there are some things that are better left unsaid. That is, until I return with Act Three. Through the ages, there have been endless examples of people who believed their bodies to be possessed by evil spirits. Now, as the result of a contact in outer space, astronaut Margot Gordon finds her body possessed by an alien being. Though we have no way of determining whether this creature is evil, we do know that it can and will fight for its life. Playing unwilling host to an extraterrestrial life form is proving to be quite unpleasant. Especially when the unwelcome guest has no intention of ever leaving. Owen? Owen? Margo. Oh, Owen, thank heaven you're still alive. Margo. No, 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 no. Don't try to talk. Are you all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. Please, lie still. I lost control of the wheel. Hurry, hurry over here. Oh, Margo, l- listen. Please, yeah. Shh, don't talk. You know, I have to tell you. This is all my fault. I can't remember. None of this would have happened if I had kept you out of it. I came as soon as I heard. Oh, Harry. How is he? Intensive care. Critical. They won't know for hours. But at least you're all right. I mean, sometimes these accidents look worse than they are. This was no accident. Well, not a scratch on you, but then... What did you say? It wasn't an accident. Oh, come on. Something made Owen lose control of the car. Uh, Honey, it's been a traumatic experience for you. The alien, that's who did it. The... Alien? Owen was trying to tell me something. You're serious, aren't you? Harry, when I was in orbit, up there, I, I, I can't explain how, a living organism, an intelligence of some alien origin, merged with me. Don't stare at me like that. I'm not crazy. It invaded me, became a part of me. It lay dormant for a while, undetected. But now it's... All right, Margo, let's put it to the test right now. Now? The chemistry building is just across the campus. This, this can't be right. Now, how many more tests are you going to run before you believe me? Now, the, these readings are impossible. But your red blood cells. The structure is altered. And there are elements present in the plasma which fit no known category. I told you. Body fluids, blood pressure, heartbeat. It's as if your body was... Adapting somehow, but drastically. The alien is adjusting to a totally different environment. It's hard to believe. It's an intelligent life form. And it's living. Oh, what a breakthrough. I've finally convinced you that it is a form of life. 
Now, this is important, Michael. Really important. Who are you calling? Well, we have to get Dr. Schiller over here. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Then I've got to call the Heinrich Institute. Oh, Harry. Harry, we can't let all these people know. I, I don't want a lot of publicity. I'm not a guinea pig. I'm an astronaut. You know, is uh, Dr. Schiller in? Ah. Good, good. I'll, I'll call him back in ten minutes. He's on his way home. I want this kept quiet. Well, you can't keep a thing like this quiet. The alien has to be destroyed. What? Destroyed. Before it completely takes over my body. Before I go out of my mind. You can't just destroy a thing like this with a snap of your fingers. I mean, I mean it takes time. I don't have time. The alien has power. Oh, sure, sure. It can do things. If you don't help me get rid of it, I'll just have to do it myself. Margo. You. Must not destroy. You almost killed Owen. He was a threat to survival. Margo, who, who are you talking to? You're evil. No, not evil. You tried to kill. I did not understand kill. Did not know then about killing. Only could understand survival. There's got to be a way to rid myself of you. Must not destroy. I am all that remains. I am the last. I must survive. When you've completely taken over my body, what then? The last of my race. I must go on. Margot, you're talking to thin air. What happens when I have no control over this body? All this strength. All this power. Harry, do you know I could lift you with one hand? You're talking irrationally. Do I have to show you? Wait, Margot, what? Hey, hey, put me down. Up, 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 up to the ceiling. Hey, put me down. I'll, I'll hold you there. Put me down, Margot. You asked for it. Oh, Margot. Now will you help me? It's true. What you've been telling me... I had some control still. But I don't know for how long. Harry, forget about the journals, the newspapers. Just help me. But... but don't you see how dangerous this is to me? If we don't stop it? All right. All right, I'll try to find a way. Just give me time to get some equipment together. I don't like the idea of putting you in a pressure chamber. It's dangerous. Harry... Ready? Ready. Switch on. Nothing. Nothing happened. Move on to the x-rays. We've ruled out pressure, radiation, electricity... We've even had you in the centrifuge. Well, there must be something. But, Margo, we might as well face reality. This condition of yours is going to be permanent. There's got to be a way. I can't be someone else. An alien. I can't, Harry. The heat. What? What is it? We've tried a lot of things except heat. Heat? Yes, Heat. Ever since the alien began to take over, I've developed an abnormal sensitivity to warm temperatures. The alien keeps repeating how hot it is. And, of course, I'm hot, too. This room, Harry, it's unbearable. Well, it's only 60 degrees in here. It's stifling. But... But I've found the weak spot. I'm going to venture a guess that the alien still hasn't adjusted to Earth's environment. It's not quite used to the warmth. Well, you could be right, but I don't see how That's we're... That's the key. That's the key. That's the way to destroy it. You intend to use some form of intense heat on your body to destroy the alien? Right. But, Margot, in destroying the alien, isn't there a probability that you also destroy yourself? I know. Well, I won't have anything to do with anything that might also kill you. Is it better that I not take the risk? That I remain alive physically but truly not myself any longer? My mind won't belong to me. Anything is better than being dead. Is it? Well, what would you have me do? Don't you have some kind of heating chamber in this building? No, absolutely not. I won't allow... You must. Look, we've taken enough risks already. The, the time has come to accept the condition, Margot. No. We'd still have each other. We'd still be together. It wouldn't be the same. 
maybe we don't have to use really intense heat. We wouldn't have to destroy the alien. Just use enough heat to drive it away. Where? I don't know and I don't care. Any place, as long as it's away from me. Let's try something first. What are you doing? This is steam heat, Harry. I'm turning it up as high as it can go. I'll sit along the wall here by the radiator. Margot, I don't think... I don't care what you think. I'm going to force the creature out of my body. Drive it away from the heat. Look, you can injure yourself this way, Margot. Stay away, Harry. I mean it. Margot. Oh, the heat is terrible. The heat, Margot. Move us away from the heat. No, I'm not moving. Hot. So hot. I must get rid of you. I mean no harm. Please. No. You must leave my body. Body will not adjust. Do not understand. You cannot live in my body. You had no right to take over my body. Needed a, a body. Meant no harm. Uh, it's working. I I can feel you getting weaker. Cannot die. My duty to live on waiting to begin again. Find a new body. Begin again. Weaker. Still weaker. I chose the wrong body. Basic structure different, but still the same. Understand now why you fight me. You are the other. You are the other. The other? What other? Cannot stay in this body. You are the other. Must find new body. Right body. What do you mean I'm the other? Not Right. The heat must uh, find a body of, of the other. The heat. I can't. I can't think straight. I'm growing weak for two. Understand now. Two of each kind. Two of each species. Margot, you are the. Other. Yes. Yes, I understand now. You are the other half. You are the female. They call the other female on this planet. Must find my other. Yeah, must survive. Must find a way to live on. gone, Harry. The alien is gone. I can feel it. My body. I don't feel hot anymore. Uh, I'll run some tests to be sure. Blood pressure, heart rate, body temperature. All back to normal. It's gone. Really gone. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, somehow you... Your entire body chemistry is reverting back. Gone. Where did it go? When you show up at the base on Monday morning, you should be completely back to your old self. It had to go somewhere, but where? Margo? What's wrong, Harry? Did you just hear that? Hear what? That sound. What sound? for, For a minute, I thought I heard a sound. A voice. What did you think it was? Well, I don't know. Something... Well, it didn't make much sense. I have found the other... Uh, something like that. I have found the other? Oh. Margo? What's with you? Uh, um, nothing. Well, you look as if you've seen a ghost. Oh, come on, let's get out of this hot box and find ourselves two of the biggest ice cream sodas in the city. Harry, it's, it, it's not hot in here. What is it? 
Margot. What's wrong? Nothing is wrong. Everything is as it should be. It... It did find a new body. I have found... a new beginning. You're... Harry. We... are Harry. Everything is as it should be. A new beginning. It seems that while things have cooled down for Margot, they're heating up for Harry. Which is really only fair. Especially to those of you who are fierce believers in poetic justice. Harry is serving science in a capacity he never dreamed possible. Preserving an alien life form from eventual extinction. Yes, justice is our motto. I'll be back in a moment with a final verdict. The great philosopher Sir Francis Bacon said, if a man be gracious and courteous to strangers, it shows he is a citizen of the world and that his heart is no island cut off from other lands, but a continent that joins to them. Why not carry this a bit further? How will man react when he makes that first contact with a celestial neighbor? Will he welcome such a stranger and prove himself to be more than a citizen of the world, but a citizen of the universe? Our cast included Phyllis Newman, Marion Seldes, Lloyd Batista, and Hans Conried. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. What if someone should want an autopsy? What, what would I say? Jack or Fred or the other Magnum board member? Of course, Arthur would stop them. He signed the death certificate, his word. Besides, who could do that without my permission? Unless there was some suspicion of... Uh, it was narrowing down to Harriet and me. I had to act. Now, first thing, to discredit whatever she might say. I called Arthur's office and said I was too sick to keep my appointment at four. I started eating nothing but toast, a few potatoes for dinner. I began to take a few grains of arsenic at a time. I had to make it believable. I had to make it believable she was the prisoner... And I was the next intended victim. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>